Welcome to Jane Jewer Art. In today's video, I'll talk you through from start to finish of how I painted this gorgeous French Brittany called Pepper. I always begin with a very basic pencil sketch directly onto the canvas. Sometimes I do this by eye, sometimes I use a projector or a grid system to make sure that I get my proportions exactly correct. I don't draw any of the details as I like to put those in with my paintbrush much later on. You'll want to start by filling in the darkest areas first and if you're using oil paint, I recommend just diluting it a little bit with something like linseed oil or poppy seed oil because you only want a thin layer as your first layer of paint. At this stage of the painting, you want to be focusing on the main values, the lights, the darks, the shadows, the shapes, not so much the little details. Those will come later on. I've only recently taught myself to use oil paints after years and years of painting with only acrylics. I thought before I started that oil paints were actually quite difficult to use, but in fact it's the opposite. I actually find them very simple to use and they enable you to achieve quite impressive realism and they're just such a pleasure to blend. I've made a video which I'll link at the end and in the description all about how to use oil paints in a completely non-toxic and safe way. Now looking at the reference photo here you'll probably notice that my greys are too light but that's okay because I'll come in and I'll darken them later. The joy of oil paints is you can really easily just blend and change the tones as you go. A little tip here, um, I use paint sample cards to help me to select a background colour. I find this the quickest and simplest way um, and I need to put the background in at about this stage in the painting uh, because if you wait too long it's difficult then to get the edges of the fur painted correctly because you'll want to paint over the background colour with all the edges of the, the hairs and especially the ear area here. So it's important to get the background painted in at this stage. I opted for this lovely greeny blue because I found it really brought out the, the warm sort of orangey brown in the eyes and in some of the fur. Blue and yellow are opposite colours on the colour wheel so this is a good option to really make some of the colours in the painting of the dog stand out. The dog's body is out of focus in the reference photograph so I'm going to leave it that way in the painting as well and not worry about painting the detailed hair on the dog's body. Um, this will help the face actually stand out more. It's a good idea to let the first layer of paint dry for a couple of days and then you can go in with the second layer. So now I'm just darkening up the darks and going in for some more details. For the second layer of paint, I don't dilute it at all. I just use it straight as it comes out of the tube. I'll actually go over this area many times um, it's sort of a, just an ongoing process of blending, darkening and lightening and you just stop when it looks right. I use Charvin oil paints which are actually made with poppy seed oil and they're just lovely and buttery to work with. The only part of the dog's face that is really in perfect focus is the nose and mouth so I don't need to worry about the specific hairs on the parts of the face that are further away. The important thing is to remember as you're painting the direction that the hair grows in naturally and just try to follow that direction with your brush each time. That's the best way that you can sort of suggest the hair without actually painting each individual hair 
which would take forever. I recently invested in this brush to try to paint sort of thicker hairs all in one go and so far I really love using it. Then I like to use the edge of an angle brush to paint some of the more defined hairs. I find that's a lot easier than using a really thin tiny brush. And you can get quite a nice soft effect with this. I usually sort of blend the light colour into the darker colour and then blend back the darker colour into the lighter colour. So working in both directions. So working on the nose, it's all about layers again. Um, starting of course with the basic colours and then building up to the details at the end. So here I've just put in the shadows, the different lights and darks. And then later on I'll start adding all the tiny details and the sort of orange peel effect of the, the skin of the dog's nose, um, which I do with a very tiny brush. You'll see that in a bit. One tip is to hang on to all of your old brushes because they can be very useful when painting with oil paints and trying to achieve different textures. So this old brush, instead of having to throw it away, has become very useful for blending colours on the nose. When painting the mouth, I think it's useful to actually not think about what you're painting and just to try to see the individual shape rather than think I'm painting a tongue and teeth and lips right now. So just break it all down into little shapes and paint exactly what you see. And then when you step back, you'll notice that it actually looks like a dog's mouth. <laughs> I like to work from an image on a phone because I can zoom right in on a specific detail and just focus on one area at a time um, so I find that very useful and it's nice that you can hold it in one hand and paint with the other hand as well. One thing I always bear in mind when I'm painting teeth is to avoid painting the line in between each tooth. Um, even with human portraits that tends to make people look a bit goofy and the same probably applies to dogs so yeah I just do the out the edges of the teeth and not the the gaps in between generally. So now I'm going in with the tiny details on the nose and I use a very old, almost ready for the bin, basic brush that I've sort of made worse by moving around a lot on the palette and it's given me just a few little points that I can do each time the brush touches the nose and I do little black dots and little white ones and they all mix in together to give a realistic dog nose effect. One of my absolute favourite parts of oil painting is the blending phase. So you just take a completely dry brush and blend the colours that you've already put on the canvas and it gives you a lovely soft effect. So I'm just working in the more detailed areas now and trying to get the different light and dark areas correctly blended. I do most of my painting with an angle brush. I could probably have painted this whole dog just using an angle brush actually. So I'm just getting the white paint onto this brush, just the right amount so that I can paint some whiskers. You do need to make sure the paint's just the right thickness though for it to come off the brush in a nice fluid way. It takes a very steady hand and 
I actually had to turn the canvas on the side so that I could use the, the way that my arm moves to get the right curve on the whisker. It just didn't work when the canvas was upright. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this video helpful and useful and that perhaps you learned a few new tips and you feel that you can now go and paint a dog. Let me know in the comments how you did. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe. <laughs>